Okay, now welcome back to our day lesson. So we we are going to start from functional leaves, which we did partly last week on Friday, but did not finish. Okay, that was on Thursday where we are learning on functional leaves. So I'm going to take you through that part again, then we continue. Okay. So uh we introduce the function of leaves to say that a plant has different parts okay a plant has different parts so we name the parts let us just remind ourselves on the parts of a plant quickly let us just uh, remind ourselves on the parts of a plant yes in tama to say that we have stem so stem is part of the plant okay apart from stem joy what else we have we have roots so we talk of stem as one part of a plant we talk of roots apart from roots, what else did this uh we say about yes not you city we talk of leaves mm -hmm. any other part of a plant that you know jubilee we talk of roots Apart from fruits, boys, where are you? Bilali, just give us one part of a plant. Branch. We talk of branch. Apart from branch, what else? What else did we talk about? Yes, Omar. Flower. We talk of flower. Now, we say that the plant has different parts. Okay? Yes. It is this part that make up the plant. Are we together? Yes. So we were discussing on the uh, functions of roots, which we are done. Okay. So yes. in on Thursday or in Thursday lesson, we were discussing on functions of leaves. Yes. But unfortunately, we did not uh, finish up. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to check you through the function of leaves. Then later we shall discuss something else. Are we together? Yes. Now under leaves, we say that uh, what are leaves? Water leaves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Water leaves, Clappy. For your own understanding, just uh, as per your own understanding, water leaves. Yes. Have you ever asked yourself what are these leaves? Yes. Uh, Neymar. Leaves is one of the green plants that grows from a stem or a twig of a plant. Yeah. We say that leaf is one of the green, one of the green, usually flat parts that grow from a stem or a twig of a plant. Okay, so as we are drawing the plant, we saw that the leaves come from a either stem or from a twig of a plant. Are we together? In grade five, we learned about uh, uh, flowering and non flowering. Okay. So we learned about uh, this green and non green as well. Are we together? So on top of leaf, leaves are green, okay? This is one of the green, usually flat uh, parts that grow from either stem or from a tree of a plant. Yeah. We say that there are different types of leaves. When you look outside right now, we can see so many plants, okay? And looking at these plants outside, they have different types of leaves. Or are they the same? No. Are they the same? No. When you look at them, some are wider, okay? Others are narrow, okay? Yes. So we are saying that there are different types of leaves. So the two types of leaves that we are learning, we have one we call simple leaf. Say simple leaf. Simple Say simple leaf. Simple leaf. Yeah, so we have simple leaf. And the other type is compound leaf. Say compound leaf. Compound leaf. Compound leaf. Compound leaf. Compound leaf. Yeah, so we have simple leaf and compound leaf. So in our definition, say that a simple leaf is a leaf that consists. Uh, this is a leaf that has a leaf blade that is one piece only, okay? Yeah. But on top of compound leaf, it has so many leaflets. Are we together? 
A grade six. Are we together? Yeah. So you see that a simple leaf is a leaf. Uh, this is a leaf leaflet. That is one piece, okay? But for a compound leaf, it has so many leaflets. That's why we are saying these are the two type of leaf. Now, having known the types of leaves, we go straight to the functions of leaf. Remember, I said that each part of the plant has its functions, okay? As the way we learned about our uh, parts of our, bo our bodies. We say that every part of our body has its function, okay? So, same to the plants as well, okay? Yes, they have different parts, but these parts have different functions. So, let us look at the functions of leaves. So, say that the main function of a leaf is photosynthesis. Say photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Say photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. You know what is photosynthesis? Yes, Neria. Yes, Neria. What is photosynthesis? Neria, being We say that at one point, these plants usually make their food. Are we together? We enjoy the food. We enjoy some, uh, some other. Okay, so we're saying that these plants make their own food in a process that is called photosynthesis. So this is a process whereby the plants make their own food. So one function of leaf is photosynthesis. Are we together? Are we together? Yeah, so we're saying that one of the functions of leaf is photosynthesis. And you're saying, uh, we said that most of these leaves are green, okay? Most of the leaves are green, and the leaves are green because of the uh, chlorophyll. Okay, in the six, we learned about chlorophyll. We said that uh, chlorophyll is the green coloring matter. Are we together? Yes, yes. The plant is green because it has chlorophyll, the green coloring matter. So, you think that most of the leaves are green, and this is due to chlorophyll. Okay. So uh, the plants or the leaves usually use the chlorophyll, that is the green coloring matter. It also uses water, okay? It also uses sunlight. It also uses carbon dioxide to make its own food. Are we together at that point? Are we together at that point? Yeah. So the leaves uses the sunlight, uses the water, uses the chlorophyll, uses carbon dioxide to make its own food. Now, the process of making the food is what is, is known as photosynthesis. So, photosynthesis is one function of the leaves. Then, we say that apart from photosynthesis, the leaves also or the, another function of leaves is transpiration. Say transpiration. Transpiration. Say transpiration. transpiration. So we have transpiration. We say that the, the leaves also sometimes are uh, the leaves breathe, okay? And they breathe through their leaves. Are we together? The plants breathe and they breathe through their leaves. So that process is what is known as photosynthesis. Or we are also saying that. At one point, these plants usually loses water, okay? Because when we're doing our experiments, we saw that when you put water, for instance, okay, when you put water in a in those containers of ours where we're, we're discussing about the function of roots, after some time you realize that the water has been absorbed. So when you cut the same, you'll find the same water at the same. So it just moves until she reaches the other part. Okay, so this water is going to be the plant will lose the water through their leaves. Are we together? And that process, you say, it is called transpiration. So transpiration is the process in which plants lose water. The process through which plants lose water. Okay? Uh, we say that it loses water through tiny holes. Okay? When you look at the leaf, it has some tiny holes. Those tiny holes, we call them Stomata. We call them stomata. We call them stomata. Yeah, we call them stomata. So when you're talking about transpiration, then you should say 
is the process through which plants lose water through their stomata. Are, are you getting me? Are you getting me? Yeah. That is the second function of leaves. So apart from photosynthesis, we also have transpiration. That is the loss of water through their uh, through their stomata. Then we also talk of uh, storage. We say that these leaves also there are some plants which store their food in their leaves. For instance, which plants usually uh, store their food in the leaves? Kale. We talk of kale, cabbage, cabbage spinach. spinach. We have uh, pigweeds. So these are some of the plants which usually store their food in their leaves. So and um, that we say that the plants also store food through their leaves. So it is also another function. Now we together. So we're saying the functions of leaves we talk of are photosynthesis, we talk of transpiration, and we talk of storing food for the plants. So we were writing, but we did not finish. So uh, we stopped at the last part that we did was on photosynthesis. So kindly before we go to the next part of our plant, I'd like us to write on the function of the leaves. And today we shall just write on transpiration. That is the second function, that is transpiration. Then we go to uh, leaves that store food. Then we go to the other part. Are we together? Yes, so let us continue from there so that we finish on the functions of leaves. Then we discuss something else. So can, can you just, it's a continuation. So just write the second function of leaf is transpiration. So we had write about photosynthesis. So two, you write transpiration. So you write transpiration, then say transpiration. Thank <laughs> you. 
in our books then we have some uh, practical activity that we need to carry out in order to justify all these we have discussed okay so the first activity that we're going to do is to find out if plants remove excess water through their leaves okay yes okay and let me give you some minutes you write then we discuss what you're supposed to have so that you can carry out our practicals okay yeah. Am I blocking? We are done. Yes. Are we through? Yes. So we were saying that once we are done discussing that, that there is also a practical activity that we need to carry out 
in order to find out if plants are remove excess water through the tiny holes, which we call stomata. So you're saying to carry out that activity, the number of things that we need to have, okay? So we're saying that uh, to investigate how uh, to investigate if plants remove excess water through their leaves, we shall need a balloon, okay? So for us to carry out this practical activity, we will need a balloon, a young growing plant, and a string. Okay? So, a practical activity. Okay, a practical activity that is uh, to investigate to investigate to investigate If plants remove excess water, to investigate or to find out if plants remove excess water through their leaves, we will need, for us to out this, we will need what you need, the thing one, we shall need a balloon, okay? We shall need a balloon. We shall also need a young planted, a young growing plant, sorry, a young growing plant, and three, a string, okay? We will also need to have a string. So these are the three materials that we need for us to carry out our practical activity. That is to find out if plants remove excess water through their leaves. So let's uh, so who will bring for us the balloon? Okay, so make sure by tomorrow morning we have the balloon. Also, we need to have a young growing plant. Okay. Who will bring for a young growing plant? We can just guess from school, okay? Then a string. Yes, Guhura will bring for us a string. So let us make sure we have all these materials. So the, let me just take you through the steps that we're going to have. Step one, you're going to cover the leaf of the plant with the balloon, okay? You're going to cover the leaf, uh, the leaf of the plant with the balloon. Use a string to tie the transparent balloon, okay? So you're going to use uh, the string to tie the transparent balloon. Then, step two, you're going to leave the tied plant in the sunlight for about two to three hours, okay? You shall just give it time, and that time should be two to three hours. Then, untie the balloon and observe inside the balloon, okay? What, what should I get you? Or the question that you should answer is, what do you see? So after untying the balloon, you have to observe and tell me what you have seen. Then later, we shall discuss the observation as a class. Are we together? So for our friends at Kipangoni, I trust you will also do the same tomorrow. Make sure you have the balloons, you have the young growing plants, and as well as the string. So that when we are concluding on our practical activity, we will all come to the conclusion that uh, plants remove excess water through their leaves. Are we together? Yeah, so I trust we shall do the same and tomorrow we shall get the findings from our observation. As I'm concluding, I'm going to give you some questions on what you have been doing. Yes, 
This will be your homework. This will be your homework. So I'm going to give you some questions. You will copy them. Then you answer them at home. So let's just copy this question. It will be part of our homework from the board. So I guess we need to write the forms. Just the back. No, that's right. You can write them at the back. I think all of you still need that to write them again. Do you have homework books? Oh, yes. Just use the same science book, but you write at there. Yeah. 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 use the same science book, but yeah. I have a reason why I'm saying so. For question one, question one, question one, question one. Question one, just write this question. Yes. Let's say three, these three functions of leaves in green slang. That is question one. Question two. Question two. So this is your homework. Kindly copy the questions and answer them at home. So that marks the end of our lesson. Let us meet tomorrow as we are going to add out our practical activity. See you.
So good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Father. How are you? Now, are you through with whatever is on the board? Yes. Which part have you not finished? The assessment. Then we can allow you to use the other part of the board. Fine. Get your English and textbooks. Or thing. 
The first statement is, can you read the first one? I didn't get that. Some children do not go to school. Some children do not go to school. Now, some children do not go to school. Which one shows the amount or the number? The one? Sir. The one? Sir. Is there enough money to buy Amina a dress? Give me the word. Uh -huh. Harry number three and then say the word. Number three. Number three. Mister or Missy. Please read what is there. Which is the word you're talking about? Eh? A lot of. Then we go to number four. Yes. Each child worker was carrying a heavy sack. Uh -huh. Which one are we going for? Each. Next is number five. A few. A few teenagers were domestic servants in the home. The word is? A few. The word is? A few. Uh -huh. Number two. There are two. Then we have a few and? Some. And some. Number six. Yeah, and next schools for all the children in Kenya. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good, next. Uh -huh. Each. Uh -huh. A lot of children need time to play. A lot of. A lot or a lot of? A lot of. Now, somebody tell me what is the difference between few and a few? Few and a few. Then little and a little. A few is smaller than. A few is smaller than. Uh huh. And a little and a little. What is same? Little is smaller than. So we. Anna? It's smaller than little. So if I say I will serve a little juice, and someone else says I will serve little juice, who will serve a larger amount than the other one? Really? That is, I want you to research. In the next lesson, remind me to talk about them. Little, a little, few, and a few. But do your own research first. Are we in agreement? Yes. Are we in agreement? Yes. You'll find it in your, in your textbooks and you can also find it in the dictionary. Then when I come, I will find out if you did your research and then I'll give what you need to know. Are we in agreement? Yes. Are we in agreement? Yes. yes. So this week we are getting to a nice and a very enjoyable uh, strand on cultural and religious celebrations. And I know we love celebrations, right? Yes. Talking about cultural and religious celebration. 
Have you attended any of the cultural celebrations? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Have you ever attended any religious celebration? Yes. Uh-huh. Who can tell me some of these celebrations they have attended as, as uh, the cultural ones? Or rather, we start with the religious. Show me the religious celebrations you've attended. City. Sorry? Edi. Edi. Very good. Uh-huh. Sal is it Salim? Uh-huh. Ramadan, Neria, Passover, Awedi, sorry, Palm Sunday. Uh -huh. How about the cultural? Christians over the last week. You didn't attend any celebration? Christmas. You didn't have Christmas carols. Christmas, Christmas. Uh -huh. Now we go to the custom ones. We go to the cultural ones in the that are done by different communities. Which are these celebrations that are done in our communities? Tell me the celebrations that are done in your communities. Circumcision, very good area. Uh -huh. And if I may go back to music to say, we don't talk of circumcision. We call it initiation we call it initiation. because it's not every other community that circumcises others remove the 14th others will tattoo and all these are getting one a pupil or i mean a child to visit it so that is why we don't specifically talk of circumcision we say initiation because there are many ways of initiating one from childhood to adulthood very good. So we have initiation celebration. What else is celebrated in our community? How many have attended weddings in our community? Mm -hmm. What else do we celebrate in our community? Yes. Child naming celebrations at Club for Belen. Yes. Uh -huh. Child naming celebration. Uh -huh. Bullfighting. <laughs> there are communities who have such celebrations, isn't it? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, have you heard of burial? Yes. Yeah. Is burial a celebration? No. It is. It is? It is. I want us to turn our books on page 15. I want us to turn our books on page 15. And on that page, I want you to tell me what you can see. Tell your friend first. Talk to your friend and tell them what you can see on that page. I am using Spotlight English Books Learner. Learner's Book Great C. What can you see on that page? Are they talking to you? Now talk to me, what can you see? What do you think these people are, are participating in? It's a cultural celebration, isn't it? What could they be celebrating? Donkey riding. Yes. Competing, Donkey eh? Race. Donkey race. Uh -huh. Which part of Kenya was celebration in the picture here? Do you know? Where could this celebration have happened? Where could this celebration have happened? Yes, tell me, class. Lamu. Lamu. Why Lamu? It's special. Another reason why you think it's Lamu? Because there is 
because because lamu use donkeys for transportation isn't it and again the dressing code of these people what are they dressed in and then there's a tree behind there what type of a tree is that a coconut tree fine now i want you to i want us to go to activity one are you there yes. i want i have boys and girls in this class so i want mike to be the boy then i want martha to be the girl hello and i want to listen you read and taking time in this conversation a conversation is that when two people are talking isn't it and as they talk do you talk at the same time no. you allow the other person to finish what they are saying then your turn comes and you respond to what they are saying isn't it yeah. now good let me have mike hello mata class boys hello mata you are Okay. 
Then we go to Oh, you have had it in Swahili. Yes. Haraka haraka haina. Baraka. The same as Hari Hari has no. We go to Martha. Mother has mother used another one. Which is it? Practice makes perfect. Yes. Practice makes perfect is the same. It's a proverb. We go to Mike. Has Mike used it? Yes. No. Go to mother. What has mother used? Class. Don't count your cheeks before they are. And don't count your cheeks before they are crunched. Uh -huh. Has Mike used a given proverb? Yes. Which one? No, is that happy as a lamb? Uh, no, as a lack uh, proverb? No. What's that? Asimili. We go to the next one. So, how many have we come across? How many proverbs have we come across? And do you know the meaning of these proverbs? Five. Five. Five, isn't it? Now, when we talk of the early bird catches the worm, who can tell us what we mean? The early bird catches the worm. Discuss with your friend and try to come up with that meaning of that one. The meaning of the early bird catches the worm.
Now, when you're using this, when you're using when you're using this. When the sun shines, what does that mean? You know what hair is? Yes. Hair is that, yes? It is glass that you use to feed the horses or Yes. So it is harvested and it is stuck in hay, you know? So they are put like this one and then they are tied. Yes. Have you seen that? Yes. And now th those are the hay. When it is raining, it's so difficult for you to make the hay. So people, when it's raining, they do that. They make the grass grow well. Then after that, they will harvest it and stack it somewhere and store it. When they store this hay, it will be used during the drought or the farming season. When the animals are managing to feed them their pet, that one. Are we together? So if you didn't get your hay, then when you were supposed to get, will you have something to feed your animals when they're in drought? No. Very, very cold. Make hay while the sun shines. Hari, hari has no blessing. Same to us. Haraka, haraka, haina nini? Haraka. So you do things hurriedly and you do them not killing. At the end of the day, you don't achieve which what you were supposed to achieve. So if you fail to practice uh, writing well, what happens to you? Will you make your handwriting any good? No. But what if you keep on practicing? It becomes very nice, isn't it? Last one here is Count chicks before. No. In fact, we say do not count chicks. <laughs> do not count chicks before they they have hatched. What does that mean? Have you ever seen a chicken that is laying on uh, lying on the egg? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And you have put like how many eggs underneath? Ten of them. 
Does it hatch all of them? No. Could be they will hatch four, two. You may put ten and they hatch one. You may put ten and even it doesn't hatch to any chick. You may put all and they hatch all of them, isn't it? So you're not, you're never, you're never sure what will happen. That is basically what I say. Do not count your chicks before they hatch. Like someone somewhere today is saying, I am the Played, they have not even participated in the football, so they are counting the cheeks. Before I leave the class, I want us to read this one. This one.
Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. First, you are fine. Get us sit down. Get us sit down, please. Okay, it's time for agriculture. It's time for agriculture. Let us take out our boots, please. Those are standing. Can you sit down and shut your mouth? So take out your agriculture boots. Okay, previously we were discussing on the differences between the different types of soil erosion. So we discuss on the four types of soil erosion and say these types are, we have the splash, the other one, we have sheet erosion. What else? We have gully erosion and the final one is rain. So we say that there are four types of soil erosion, okay? We discuss them, the causes or the agents of this soil erosion. We also look at the differences between splash and sheet, the, the differences between rill and gully. Okay. So in our today's lesson, in our today's lesson, we are going to learn about controlling soil erosion in our locality. Okay. Okay. We we'll see how it is. Uh, it happens. Okay. What can we do so as to prevent or control it? Are we together? So that is what we are going to do in this lesson. So we shall be looking at controlling the different types of soil erosion. So first, we are going to look at how we can control splash and sheets. How we can control splash and sheets. Now, let's just get somebody who will tell us. Mm -hmm. Let's get City. City, can you please tell us what causes splash erosion? What causes splash, please? Yes? Yeah. We say that splash is caused by raindrops. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Splash is caused by raindrops. And uh, because you know it is caused by raindrops, what can we do so as to prevent to prevent it? But what do you think we can do so as to prevent it? Yes. Yes, Neymar. Bill? Gutters. Gutters. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mulching. Mm -hmm. Mulching is one of the practices that we can do so as to prevent splash. Before we go to the other one, do you know what is mulching? Yes. What is mulching, Fatma? <laughs> Can you speak up? Yes? What is mulching? We say that mulching is the practice of putting dry grass or banana leaves on the surface of the soil. Okay? And in grade 5, you are learning about water conservation. We say that one way one way of, or the one reason of putting mulch is to conserve water. But in this class, we shall also learn that it's not a matter of conserving water only, but so we're saying that apart from uh, conserving water, mulching also prevents soil erosion. Are we together? Because uh, when we look at, uh, for instance, splash, we're saying that it is caused by raindrops. So the moment we put uh, dry leaves or dry grass on a surface of the soil, that means even if it's raining, okay, the raindrops are not going to hit the ground directly, okay? And therefore, it will prevent soil erosion. Are we together? Yeah. So when talk of mulching, we can say that it's a... It's a it's a way or it is conserve moisture or water and also it prevents soil erosion. Apart from that, which other method do you think we can practice so as to prevent soil erosion? Yes, Omar. Planting trees. We say that 
the causes or the agents of soil erosion are the main ones are water and wind. Are we together? We have water and wind. These are the main causes of soil erosion. And we say, uh, we say that uh, wind is moving air. So, in a place where we have a less tree, the soil uh, can be carried, can be easily carried away. Because as the strong winds come, there are no trees which can prevent th those winds from taking the soil, okay? So what it, it will happen is that once this, uh, the winds come, it just carry away the top soil. Are you together? But when you plant trees, the trees are going to reduce the speed of wind, okay? And therefore, we are going to have less chances of soil erosion. Are we together, class? So we are saying that uh, another practice is planting trees. Planting trees. Apart from planting trees, what else do you think can help us to prevent a uh, splash and sheet? We are basically looking at splash and sheet. What can we do that uh, can help us to prevent splash erosion and sheet erosion? Yes, who can give us the other one? Mm -hmm. Apart from the two, we have talked of mulching, we have talked of planting trees. What else can we do that can prevent soil erosion? Yes, Belen? Making gardens. No, Not really. We are looking at splash and sheets. We cannot build gardens. Yes, Fatma? Planting grass. Okay? We talk of planting grass. Remember I say that uh, when we plant grass, those are, we, call, we can talk of the ground covers, okay? So a ground cover is a plant that cover enough of the ground to prevent the soil from soil erosion. So for instance, if you plant grass, hmm, when you look around, we can see uh, larger areas of a school compound covered with grass. So look at the soil. It is prevented, okay? Even if we have strong winds, the soil will not be carried away. Even if we have running water, this soil will not be carried away. Are we together? So you're saying that by also planting grass can be or can help us to prevent soil erosion. So these are some of the ways that we can practice in order to prevent these two types of soil erosion. Are we together at that point? Are we together? Yeah, so you're saying uh, the ways in which we can do so as to prevent soil erosion and just of mulching. We have talked about uh, planting trees, okay, which prevent the speed of wind, hence preventing soil erosion. And also we talk of the ground covers, okay, they can also help us prevent soil erosion. So before we go far, let us first put uh, this in our books. Let us put on the ways which can prevent uh, soil erosion, okay. Let us put them in writings, then we discuss the other ways of preventing the real and gully. So let us write, please. Let us write it. Yeah. <laughs> 
So those are some of the practices that you can uh, practice in order to prevent uh, slash and shield erosion. So I want us to read these practices, all of us. Let us read, read the first one. Slash erosion. Let us read this. Slash erosion can be controlled with Let us read what is on the board. Splash erosion can be controlled with ground cover. Let us sing together. Splash erosion can be controlled with ground cover. What is a ground cover? Ground cover is a plant that covers the top of the ground. You mean ground cover? Ground cover. Let us read 
let us read together all of us. by catching and absorbing the water that will have made contact with the soil. Because when the raindrops make a contact with the soil, that's when the loose soil is displaced, okay? Leaving some holes. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Can you read the second practice? Can you read this? between splash and sheet, we saw what causes splash and what causes rain. So uh, now let's look at what causes rain and what causes gani. We say that, uh, for us to say that we have rain erosion is when we start to see some channels, okay? We say that when you start seeing some small channels that are forming in your land surface, that must be rain, okay? And say it can be caused by running water. It can be caused by running water. Now, suppose, suppose you have identified a certain piece of land where we have the real erosion. What are some of the things that you can do in order to prevent it? Who can just give us one? What can you do to prevent the real erosion? Yes, Omar? Building gardens. Building gardens in real erosion. No, that is in Delhi. That should be in Delhi. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are these activities that we can do in order to prevent rain? Already, the small channels have been formed. What are you going to do with them? Or are you going to just leave them to develop into Delhi? 
What is this that you're going to do in order to prevent them? Yes. You can plant with trees or grasses. So we are saying that one way of controlling rail is by planting grasses. Okay. You say that the grass controls the flow of water down there slow. Already we have some channels that have started to develop. So the first step you can do, you can just decide to, to plant grasses. Okay. Because when you plant grass, they're going to control the flow of water down the slope. Because the grass trunk is soil as water flow down the slope. And therefore, uh, the, the small channels can, can, they can just go away, okay? So I'm saying one way is by the top of the grass control of planting grasses. You can top of planting grasses as one way of controlling green. Planting grasses. The thing that grasses trap the soil. Planting grasses. Grasses control the flow of water. Grasses control the flow of water. Down the slope. So, suppose we have small channels that have started to develop, then we can decide to plant grasses. Okay, remember, say that the grass controls the flow of water down there. Slow. So, the moment we, we plant the grasses, then we can reduce the flow of water, and that can reduce as uh, the small channels develop further. Okay. Apart from that, what else do you think we can do in order to prevent the gully and rain erosion? Yes. What do you think we can do it again in order to prevent these two types of soil erosion? Already we have channels, okay? And when these channels are not controlled, they're going to form into uh, bigger and larger channels or the deeper and larger channels, which we call them gully. What is this that you're going to do? in order to prevent them, yes? Building gabions, okay? So, before we go to building gabions, let us look at uh, contour planting. So, another practice is by a contour planting or plowing, okay? So, we have another practice is contour. We have contour plowing or planting. So called contour planting or planting. Now let us explain and say contour planting, this is the farming practice which is done across the slope. This is the farming. Thank you. 
Now, when you talk of control flowering or planting, you're saying that this is the farming practice which is done. This is the farming practice which is done across a slope. Following is elevation of contour lines, okay? This method decreases the uh, decreases topsoil movement and therefore prevents soil erosion. So there's those people who usually do farming, okay? We learn in the five what is farming. So when you're doing farming, you have to practice the contour farming or planting, okay? That is, which is done across, okay? That it should be done across that slope. Then those people, let's say this is my farm. Let's say this is my farm. Ah. So it's has a uh, sloppy land, okay? So you're supposed to do it across, okay? But not, but not downwards, okay? Because the moment I start having these lines, or I, I just do farming downwards like this, I'm going to have some channels, okay? I will form some channels. Then as rainwater comes, or maybe it's raining, the rain is going to follow these lines, which can further develop into real erosion. But we need to do it across, okay? We need to do it across to prevent um, soil, or the, to prevent the movement of the top soil, okay? Yeah, so that is the second method that you can also do it in order to prevent real and daily erosion. The third method that you can also practice in order to prevent, we have the third method, that is terrace or terraces. Have you ever heard of terraces? You have it? Have you ever heard of terraces? Just us? Have you ever heard of it? So we talk of terraces across the slope. So we have terraces. We have terraces. Our third method, top of terraces. Terraces across the slope. Terraces across the slope. Okay. Yeah. Terraces across the slope. Say terraces across the slope slow down the speed of slow down the speed of flowing water. So let us uh, first define what is a uh, terrace. So in terms of a terrace, is saying a terrace is that those are saying that you know what a terrace is. To so say a terrace is a terrace is a raised. This is a raised portion of land. This is a raised portion of land. That is flat. A raised portion of land that is flat, or it can be nearly, it can be a uh, raised, it can be flat or raised. Okay. So this is a raised portion of land that is flat, or nearly flat land, or nearly flat land. And level above, level above a shoreline, level above shoreline, it can be above shoreline, a valley or a plain. So to go to the same, this is the raised portion of land, okay? Which is nearly flat, it can be flat or nearly flat, and level above the shoreline, a valley or a lake. So, how does this prevent soil erosion? I think that uh, the grasses trap soil as water flow down there, 
slow. So he's saying that at this how it helps soil erosion. So saying the grasses usually trap the soil as water flows down the slope. As water flows down the slope. So he's saying that uh, terrace across the slope. Uh, slow down the speed of moving water. So this slow down the movement of water. Then we have another method that is building gabions. Building gabions. So that is also another method which you can practice to control uh, the gully erosion. Building gabions. Do you know what are gabions? Yes. Yes? Yes. Who can tell us? Do yeah, you know what is a gabion? Can you tell us? What are gabions? Have you ever seen them? Yes. It's like steps. Yeah. Who have ever seen the gabions? Build somewhere? Yes? Yes, but I've never seen them. Yes. Okay. So let us uh, see what a garden. So a garden is a cage, okay? It can be a cage that's in a box filled with rocks, concrete, or sometimes sand, and which is good for road building, okay? So in terms of a garden, you're saying a garden, uh, a garden sorry, a garden is a cage. A gabion is a cage. This is a cage or a cylinder. This is a cage or a cylinder or a box filled with rocks. Filled with rocks. It's a cage, a cylinder, or a box that is filled with rocks. Or it can be rocks or concrete. Or sometimes, or sometimes, sometimes sand can be filled with sand, which is used for, uh, which is used for building road, uh, or for road building. So instead of this garden, it's a cage, it can be a cage, it can be a box, it can be a cylinder which is filled with rocks. Okay, so you can just decide to put some rocks in a maybe in a, in those stacks. Okay, then you identify where we have the gully erosion. Okay, you just place them. Are you together? So you think a gabion is a cage, is a cylinder, or a box filled with rocks. Okay, uh, how do they prevent soil erosion? They think that uh, gabions are barriers. Okay. These are barriers. In physical education, you learn about barriers, okay? Yes. Yeah. So, in terms of gabions, they think these are barriers that trap soil and allow water to pass through. So, they're, they're barriers which usually trap the soil, okay? But they only allow water to pass through. But even if the water passes through, it will not be uh, with high speed. Are you together? Yes. Yeah. So, you're saying that. Gabions are barriers. Gabions are barriers. Gabions are barriers. These are barriers that trap soil. These are barriers that trap soil and allow water. They trap soil and allow water. Water to pass through. So, by building gabions, also can we help us prevent soil erosion? By building gabions, can help us prevent soil erosion. So, we build gabions, especially when we have the gully erosion. Are we together? Because we say that in Delhi, we have deeper and larger channels. And these channels can be either you or big shaped channels, okay? Now, suppose you have those larger channels. This way, now we can decide to build the gabions. But you cannot build gabions in real erosion, okay? 
Why? Because the channels are still small. Are we together? They are still small or they are shallow. Are we together? Yeah. So these are some of the methods that we can practice in order to prevent the real and gully erosion. So I would like us to go through them as we conclude. Yes? Let us read the first one, please. So, uh, the methods of controlling real and gully erosion. The first one is Planting grasses. Let us see, please. Planting grasses. Mm -hmm. Grasses control the flow of water from the slope. Mm -hmm. Grasses trap the soil as water flows down the slope. Mm -hmm. Control grass or plants. This is a planting grasses which is a number of the slope soil. Activity one. Question one to nine. Page sixteen. No. Page sixteen. Activity one. Question one to nine. Kindly answer those questions. Yes, we're talking. Yes, Omar. Are you talking? So kindly do those questions. Then. We shall discuss them together when we meet tomorrow. So that marks the end of our lesson. Let us meet tomorrow. Can you sit down? I want to meet you.